Once upon a time, there was a young maiden who lived in a small kingdom with her stepmother and two stepsisters. Treated as a servant in her own household, she worked tirelessly all day, cooking, sewing, and cleaning. Tending to her chores on the night of a long-awaited royal ball, the maiden is visited by her fairy godmother. With the help of the friendly forest animals and a touch of magic, her dirty rags are transformed into a beautiful gown, and she is sent to vie for the affections of the prince at the royal palace. Now, I have purposefully not mentioned any specific names or places, and yet, I can almost guarantee that you all are anticipating the same ending. We are all waiting for that one iconic line, and they lived happily ever after. The classic Cinderella story is deeply ingrained in American culture. In fact, it seems that all of the Disney princesses have become cultural icons. So what is it about these stories that makes them so captivating and timeless across generations? Well, the answer is actually very simple. Nearly every Disney princess story is also an underdog story. As byproducts of American culture, we are all hardwired to root for the underdog. And it's not just Disney princesses either. There is a reason we praise David for killing Goliath, a reason we root for Katniss in PETA in the arena, a reason we feel happiness when the little train says, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, and then he does, and a reason we, will, we were all secretly cheering on Loyola and Sister Jean in the 2018 March Madness Tournament, even though they were nowhere on our brackets. These figures, whether fictional or real, were all essentially underdogs. According to Merriam-Webster, an underdog is defined as one, a loser or predicted loser in a challenge or struggle, or two, a victim of injustice or persecution. And with that second definition, it dawned on me that the United States is a nation of underdogs. Our history is one underdog story after another, from the American colonists in the Revolutionary War to the inrush of immigrants in search of the American dream, to finally the communities of women and African Americans and indigenous peoples who continue to take a stand against the norms of American culture and fight for their rights to equality. Whether you realize it or not, we are constantly contributing to this long history, as many of us face our own underdog moments every day. At some point in our lives, we have all taken a test on a subject we don't really understand. We have all faced the better team. Some of us may have been born on first base, and for those of you that were, you may feel like you have to work twice as hard to catch up to the kids who were lucky enough to be born on third. Maybe for some of you, this realization is kind of disappointing. Maybe for you, underdog has a negative connotation but that's not how I see it. In fact, I believe it's exactly the opposite. I believe that the ability to embrace our underdog moments is extremely important. I want to encourage you all to embrace the times when you were undeniably the underdog, because in every underdog moment, there are three things that will always make you stronger. The first is the doubt of the audience. Every underdog faces doubt. No underdog is ever expected to succeed. Use that doubt as motivation. Allow that burning desire to prove your doubters wrong, push you to achieve goals you never thought you could reach. The second is embracing your challenger. My dad has always told me that there will always, always be people who are smarter, more athletic, or more successful than me. This may seem daunting, even discouraging at times, but an underdog is always surrounded by people who are supposedly better. Let these people encourage you. Consider them as examples and learn from them. And the third and final is the freedom of knowing you have nothing to lose. I believe there is freedom in low expectations. If I succeed, then that's awesome. But if I fail, then who really cares? I was never expected to succeed anyway. So take a risk. If you think you're going to fail, try anyway, go all in. 
because you have nothing to lose. When I first accepted the invitation to speak here today, I felt this was bound to become my own little Cinderella story. I doubted myself, wondering whether I was truly capable of settling my nerves, standing in front of a crowd of hundreds, and delivering a meaningful talk. But there was a teacher of mine who asked, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I take this opportunity? What did I have to lose? And he was right. I could stand up here and fail miserably and forget all of my lines, but I would still look back on this experience with pride, knowing that I had the courage to take it on in the first place. I'm so glad I did. Thank you.